Hey everybody. Welcome back to my layout. So as you can see, I got the uh, first AC4400 CW done that I've been working on. It's got the uh, dual speaker sound uh, as recommended by my friend Rorower on, the, uh, on YouTube. I got 603 surface mount LEDs installed uh, front and back. There's the, uh, those awesome looking sunny white LEDs. We'll flip around to the uh, back side and I'll show you the uh, CP specific single rear headlight. And there's the, uh, the rear headlight. So it's just a single 603 sunny white in there. So as usual I spent most of my time uh, building locomotives. I spent a lot of time working on this one over the last month and I'm working on a second one upstairs on my desk. Hey guys, so we're out in my garage and I'll show you the uh, one thing I did get done on the module. It wasn't much, but uh, we haven't had a very many nice days, so it's been pretty cold out here. So on the uh, real industry that I'm modeling, the uh, first two silos have the unloading conveyor or whatever you'd call it. So I'm trying to recreate that on my Fremo module. And uh, here's where I'm at. I just used my uh, Fane Multimaster with a sanding bit to uh, basically carve that out and uh, try to get it looking as much as I can uh, without going too deep. So this is a piece off the uh, Walther's kit that I'm using uh, to make this, but it's going to go there and the, the rails will go through it like that. This is the, uh, the patch I put. I don't know if it would have made a difference or not, but uh, I have lots of extra scrap wood laying around from cutting these pieces to build this module, so I thought it couldn't hurt to uh, over-engineer it a little bit. So that's where I'm at with the uh, Fremo module I'm working on, guys. As the weather gets warmer, I'm going to uh, start working on this more and more. Really, all i got to do is lay down a base coat of paint on that hole that I cut out, and I can go ahead and lay the rest of the track, so that's cool. And I'm looking forward to doing that because I do enjoy the track work. So now let's uh, go inside to my office and maybe go back in time a little bit and I'll show you, uh, we'll go through basically the build log. I've started a series of DCC and sound installs that I'm going to do on three Caddo AC 4400s, two CPs and a uh, one city financial leaser. So I'm going to do the same thing to all three of them. So here's the first one that I've uh, completely ripped apart and I've started the modifications. So I redo the wiring, a little bit of weathering on these as well. I've painted the wheels, I've soldered, you can see the, uh, the pickup there. Took the old Cato light board out of it. I can't flip it over because the trucks aren't attached right now, but uh, I've installed a uh, Soundtracks a round one inch speaker. I'm going to renumber these CP locomotives just because uh, well I've got them apart and uh, I'm going to be doing painting on them anyway so I like to uh, give them a different road number. This one's going to be 9582 which is the uh, top of that series of numbers that has the Hyad trucks and the uh, dual flags paint. So another CP feature is the uh, the rear headlight there's only one not two like uh, Cato did on these so I filled it with uh, styrene and then sanded it and I'm gonna just have the one headlight which is prototypical for CP so here are the parts that uh, each one's gonna get when I get around to doing all three a uh, soundtrack tsunami TSU AT1000 I like these, they're an atlas decoder, but they actually work pretty good for these cattos. They fit perfectly uh, in the mounts for some reason. So I like to use those. And it's the, uh, the GE FDL 16 Modern. Then the, uh, this is for the tank. This is the uh, one inch speaker. That gets, I use silicone to uh, put that into the fuel tank on the cattle underneath. Then my friend Roar. Um, I saw one of his videos of one of his Cato AC 4400s that he did a sound install on and it sounded absolutely amazing. So I thought I'd uh, go ahead and try his 
what he did to uh, install sound and he added this Zemo 10 by 15 by 11 cell phone speaker into the uh, into the shell as well as the uh, one inch speaker wired in parallel so I'm gonna try that out on these and see how it sounds for lighting I use my own uh, these are the ditch light version uh, 603 surface mounts that I've soldered leads to so those will be the ditch lights and then these are the headlight the headlight version and I've got to the point now where motor leads are on the first speakers in and I've got it uh, on the test track there just to make sure all the basic functions work uh, before I go further with the uh, the lighting installs and the second speaker. So this is what it looks like uh, before I go ahead and start with the lighting. I always test it first to make sure the motor works correctly and I got this first speaker in the tank uh, working there. The beauty of using one of these Atlas uh, AT1000 decoders is that it fits perfectly in the uh, on the Cato chassis. If you can even see the uh, the screws even line up. It's just one small piece of plastic underneath you got to cut to make it clear and it fits uh, like a glove. Then it's just a matter of uh, making a set of custom motor leads to go on the brass tabs that uh, Cato provides. But really it's not hard at all. So I just finished uh, buttoning up the uh, 9582 on the right there. Uh, got it all programmed up. Sounds all tuned on it. It's running good. All the lights work. So I put it back together, put the details on it. And uh, just before I take it down to layout, I just wanted to show side-by-side -side comparison to the uh, to a brand new Cato, which is on the left. Exact same locomotive, but uh, it just shows how that basic weathering uh, really makes it look a lot more realistic. So this shows the major uh, cosmetic change I made on the back of the 9582 there. So changing it from the, uh, the incorrect double rear headlight that Cattle put in and uh, changing it to the prototypical CP uh, single headlight. And uh, of course, renumbered it as well. It was uh, 9567. I uh, ended up just using, uh, I had some Details West pile headlight castings. And I just cut one in half and rounded the corners on it. It looks not bad. Here's where I'm at with my second. First step is uh, soldering the leads to the motor pickups. Got the road number off. It was uh, 9524, I think. Get it ready for the microscale number to renumber it. It's going to be 9510. And I've got the incorrect Cato double rear headlight uh, filled in with styrene, drilled out, and ready to paint. I also took the uh, the number off the back as well because I noticed last time when I just painted over it, you could see a slight outline of the old road number so just uh, trying to improve as I go and you learn things so got the wheel sets out painted them and then put a chalk a weathering chalk on them of a kind of a light light rusty color all the other parts are stripped down and uh, getting ready to put it back together put the uh, new decals on it new road number put all the detail parts on then weather it and then uh, start the process of putting the new uh, DCC decoder in it do the LED lighting and put the speakers in. So that'll bring us up to date uh, or mid-April guys. Stay tuned uh, for next month guys. Uh, as soon as I get this one done I'm going to start working on the C uh, CEFX uh, City Financial Blue Leaser uh, AC4400. That was the next one I'm going to do. So, As always, thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you next time.